A big core of the damage, maybe the center of the tornado was, is it just came straight over, took the roof off this home right here. Sulfur has a long ways to go. Oh, 1100 cap. For us at the ranch, now that the bison are out in the burn unit, we'll never complain about water. But what that means for us, we gotta go check our creek and we gotta go check our fences. Hey guys, Dusty Baker across the with Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to a tornado disaster relief of uh, sulfur. We're back in the disaster area of downtown Sulphur. I'm meeting up with Daniel. We're gonna drive through the downtown portion of Sulphur where this tornado just recently came through. Take a look.
here on a hill and uh, what got hit in downtown Sulphur, kind of a big core of the damage. Maybe the center of the tornado was is right here. My mom's shop is not far from right over here. Uh, friends that had a muffler shop right there, we used to take our mowers and chainsaws and all of that. Good friends. What you can see here to the south, this is the National Park Service. This is where I worked uh, Daniel from our family house and my brother-in-law down here. Uh, we worked there two years together, I believe, and then I worked two more years there in the park. And this is where, uh, you know, kind of fell in love with the bison and I had my first up close and personal uh, with bison. Uh, so the bison pasture is kind of right through there. I don't know if it was damaged or not. If you've ever been to Sulphur, there's the Vendome well down there. You can actually go taste of the Sulphur water. Right back in here is where the tornado actually really, really, really got intense. And as it starts to build up, you can see all the trees here in this beautiful park, a uh, flower park area. It's probably a quarter mile wide right in here. And it just came straight over, took the roof off this home right here. But we're on top of this hill where you can kind of see everything. Daniel's got his excavator and then I've got my, uh, the new hull and skid steer down here. I got the grapple. This slope has been difficult. There's, there's layers of this property terraces I guess you could call you got a layer a layer and a layer and a layer you even got a swimming pool down there there's a porter potty in it right now we just ripped off part of the deck and we're getting all these trees out Daniel was able to pull some of this debris out on top of these terraces and I'm able to go through pick it up and pull it out and pile it up so this is uh, day five of this uh, yesterday it rained it got muddy everywhere and we kind of regathered ourselves and uh, got a game plan with some other people working with uh, the Minutemen as a disaster response group. I think they're out of Texas. Uh, they're here. We've kind of been working with them. They're over there chainsawing lots of groups like that. So we're getting some of this stuff chainsawed, broken up, and it's easier to pull out. Been using long chain, long lengths of chain, because I can be up here on the hill and pull it out. But it's just sad to see, you know, people, we, we keep talking about the downtown part of sulfur but uh you know the park got slammed as well just right now everybody's cleaning up and you know we're, we're trying to just volunteer basically to clean all this up before all these other companies in here and start charging these people uh clean up so that's all we're i think we're really trying to do that's our accomplishment is to clean up as much as we can get stuff again like i said in our last video piled up uh, close to the road so uh, the city and some of the state organizations can come by and scoop it up load it on a dump truck dump truck takes it to the landfill or the limb yard and goes from there so For us at the ranch, we're having to go check these Not only cross are we fences with the once or twice a day now, whenever we can get to what the What comes bison. with April and May is not only the tornadoes, we've had torrential, torrential downpours of rain. Oh, Eleven had her cap. There she is. Oh. <laughs> That's a big cap. Okay. So who's this over here, Dusty?
smelling of us. Oh, yeah, that's quite the dammed up for sure. Tree fell. I think it was there the other day when I did a bunch of this work. No, on the skid steer when I did a bunch of that work. I don't know. It got up a little bit. Well, that's just water running. I mean, it could. Yeah. Oh, this would have been gone, Marissa. This would have all been gone. But it's still up. It's still surviving. It's a lot of water. Slowly, slowly erodes these walls. <clears throat> Eventually you have to, that's our fence. And it eats back into their property. We lose ground, they lose ground. You have to do something, bring big old heavy riprap rock in here or something. Big old tree fell. Dammed all this up. So all the water's sitting up here. And of course there. Yeah, it's swirling around in here. Made a big swimming pool basically. Swimming hole. Now it's everything's getting dammed up. I can see the root balls kind of back in there. Fell fell this way. Uh, about washed the our little dam out almost almost got it well it come on it came all the way up here it looks like <sighs> this is gonna be pretty soggy hun so this is gonna be pretty soggy See, that creek needs to, it needs to be cut right there so this water can just go that way instead of creating this big, huge flow and this windy part because basically it just eats into your wall. Oh my gosh, there's a tire there now? What is that thing right there? I don't know. Strange looking. But it's just, oh, that sidewall, look, it's chipping away. Is eroding. That's because of all this, this, this loop here. Because the water goes nice and steady here, then it curves and a lot of pressure goes down there. It's eaten into that bank and it's just eaten into our property. Water erosion right there. And then it comes back to being a normal creek, I guess. It's part of having creeks, but if we could probably have to cut these trees down i'm not sure but if we could get a skid steer in here something to eat this away i see a lot of roots and stuff if we could chip this away we get it to just go straight and bypass this that won't happen i mean yeah when we get floods like this it's gonna happen but that needs to come out most of right here is a perfect example the other crossing mercy and i just came from uh, was fine and it was up pretty high. I was actually worried about it because I thought well calves can get underneath it But calves they're not gonna want to get down in the creek and get underneath it. But here it's uh, Definitely we had a T-post 
obviously you got to try to anchor it somehow uh because right now it's just used barbed wire what we want to do is have a cable basically replacing this across there and attach up to those other h braces one big solid cable and then you can hang whatever you want to off of it we talked about hanging conveyor belt off of it and letting it flow uh with whatever debris comes and hits it the bad thing about these panels obviously is limbs leaves uh parts of, i mean any type of tree can get caught up in here debris in these panels uh and you just hope it flows underneath which it is flowing underneath but when it gets so high all this debris it gets weighted and weighted down and now that's the problem we have here and uh t-post is uh been pulled a little bit and i mean you're dealing with sand dirt and the t-post is just just an anchor to try to help support it up we know it's not gonna do it but anyways uh still got some work to do need to do something permanent here but we're gonna need some cable in case you guys didn't notice the big joe herd 32 adults in that group they are out in the burn unit so you're like dusty well how did they get in the burn unit well <laughs> i will just say we have some video stacked up that we're going to show you we're going to get back to some um normal uh bison ranching videos of cross timbers bison but with the tornado uh with the disaster and the cleanup between cabins and the bison shoved it to the side uh so that we could help uh, the town of sulfur community we've got some footage i want to show you we're going to catch you up on i promise we're going to catch you up on all that stuff we have some awesome stuff that well in my mind that wasn't great it's probably great footage for you but not good things uh for me uh but some wild things happened after we worked the bison here recently we uh, always move them to the burn unit and to start the grazing plan we've got some video of that coming up pretty soon it involves my friends big joe dunbar hoss and uh one of a cow in labor yeah i mean it's gonna be it's a pretty good stuff we've got some footage stacked up for you just to shoot you straight and we're gonna get back to those so when we show those videos we're gonna go back a little bit around the working time which was a couple of weeks ago and we're gonna bring that forward and show you some of that stuff got a little sidetracked uh with my mom's store getting hit by that tornado everything else going on in the community we had to really devote our time uh, and wanted to devote our time to help our community after that uh, disaster. So thank you guys for being patient with us on on kind of this back and forth stuff. We've It's been a long week. I can't imagine how hard it is for people that have lost their home. Um, we've seen the homes. I'm talking vehicles, homes, personal items, everything gone. I can't imagine what some of those people are going through. And so we can do our part by helping clean up their property and getting that stuff out of the way so that whatever happens next for them, whether they're, whether they're going to destroy their home, they're going to implode it or start over, I don't know, and getting the meals out to those folks as well. And they don't have power still. There's a lot of them that don't have power. So anyways, glad to get you caught up on all that stuff. We'll keep showing you a little bit here back and forth between what's been going on here at the Ponderosa and what's been going on in Sulphur, our hometown. So, oh, there is something I did want to mention to you while we're out checking fences and stuff in these creek crossings here on our property. Um, we did name the Bell Star Calf, and uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to, there's several of you that actually mentioned this and it caught on to me. I actually didn't know what this name meant but after looking it up actually marissa said something to me about it i was like oh i like that we named bell star if you haven't watched that video you can go back and watch it we actually filmed a live birthing of having her calf well she had it in a very interesting place this dusty area where we just had a burn on all, all these blackberries anyways we named her phoenix so thank you guys who mentioned phoenix several videos ago when bell star filmed the whole thing of having her calf i love the name phoenix rising from the ashes she had that calf out in the ashes and one of the uh followers said you know she did that so you could see her and you could capture the moment because of the struggles bell star went through of losing her calf last year 
what a blessing it is to be able to catch that on camera and her have a perfect, healthy uh, birthing and a calf. Awesome situation, very lucky to be able to film that. So Phoenix is the name for the little heifer of Bell Star. Thank you guys for all your input, your opinions, uh, your suggestions, and the names um, for all that. Got little bitty thorns on it. Ouch. And all these are about to bloom. So don't see the thorns, babe. It's plant. Whoops. It's right. You see the stems. And it's it's right there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But here's the leaves. I said this is clover. Clover is a good thing. Here you go, here's one for you. You guys tell us what plant this is. It's growing right here. It's got like little sea, or those flower things are like. Come here, mom. It's like berries look. And mom, it come looks here. like there's pollen coming mom, out. Mom, come here, mom, come here. Because there's some bugs around it. It's been actually really busy this past week. Um, been spending a lot of time uh, in the skid steer. What you saw in this video is kind of how our week's been. It's been pretty wild we we devoted a lot of time uh, to the recovery side of things and clean up uh, sulfur looks a lot different now it looks so much better in just a matter of five or six days after a tornado um, destroying downtown and over 70 homes uh, in this portion of sulfur it's amazing how fast and how intense people came in and started cleaning up and uh, Daniel and I are lucky to be able to uh, part of that movement uh, of cleaning everything up and uh, we still have a lot of work to do and the town of Sulphur and the homes the residents that were affected by it the businesses still got a long way to go folks right it's gonna take lots of years to even rebuild you know reconstruct some of these buildings if they're gonna save it and homes and it's gonna take a long time it's gonna be a long process uh, but we're here for the community um, and uh, this is a, is a great community and Soul Free has really, really good people in it. And uh, it's so exciting to see all these people come into town and want to help uh, from, the, from even just Oklahomans uh, or local residents or out of state folks trying to come in and help too. It's amazing the flood of the people. But so we pretty much, we did that. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the skid steer. Then Marissa and I would do some cabin stuff. We had to do some bison stuff. And then we'd go back in the evenings and then we would serve meals. We, we've had our ATV um, up in Sulphur and that part of downtown because if we're not serving meals, most of this week we served, I don't know, five or six days out of this week. But <laughs> we left the ATV up there so that people could use our ATV to serve some of those meals. Um, if we weren't around so we just left the ATV up there and we <laughs> we've been without it We've had to use my uncle Keith and Janie's from their property and they're connected to us on the back side uh, but Once again, what we're dealing with is not only you know everything going on At the cleanup and sulfur, but it's the rain we keep getting I will never complain about rain I don't think a farmer should ever complain about rain uh, and maybe the amount of it at one time. It's never going to be perfect. Just be happy that we have it because in two months we won't have any more than likely. It's going to be super dry. But here we have some floodwaters up and then we keep coming back and checking here. This is like the third time this week in a week that we've had to come back and check this cross fence right here because anytime we get these three, four, and then that one day, eight inches of rain, there's bound to be some problems. On one of your fences right here right so sulfur has a long ways to go and i uh, hope that we can help get it back together right now the only direction we can go is up and so that's what we're working on got to move forward got to put one foot in front of the other and i hope that we can help somehow thank you guys for watching see you guys soon keep on bison ranching